Well, it started slow, but boy, did it finish strong. I'm John Rentham with my review, New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 31 Night 1 event. So, quick note. I won't be able to watch a lot of this tournament live, at least until we get closer to the finals. I will be watching the finals live. That's a big goddamn deal to know who will go on to the Tokyo Dome after having a month-long climax. Man, we're going to need a lot of lube and a lot of fluids and a whole lot of everything to get through all this glorious climaxing repeatedly and washing our sheets constantly. And this is really goddamn awkward. The whole point is, is because of work and other projects. Yeah, I'm going to be on a bit of a time crunch, so I will be watching the shows when I can. So some reviews will be delayed. Some reviews may be doubled up. So I hope you guys understand. And let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. Because for a while, I was prepared to not necessarily hate this show, but kind of talk down about quite a bit of it. And you need some surprises to keep... You know, the uh, to keep the suspense and everything like, oh my god, I didn't expect this person to win. This person climaxed way too goddamn soon, which I would know nothing about. Would I lie? Anyway, so I did like the uh, cool recaps of the past winners and English commentary eventually. Chris Charlton, his headset was working. Kevin Kelly, bit of audio issue, but they finally got it worked out. I'm glad they're in the arena, even though they were doing great remote work. It's just really nice to have them there in the arena and they just seem to really be happy being back. That that was really cool. So the theme song, it was a choice. And it's not a very good choice. Um, Yeah, I don't really know what the deal was. I mean, the beat's fine, but the lyric, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. So we have a new Young Lion, or at least new-ish uh, to, you know, just recently out of the dojo, I think, according to Chris Charlton. Uh, Ryoe uh, uh, Oima, o -O 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 I, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. I'll try to get that name correct. Next time, taking on Sho, who's known as the Murder Machine. He's a murder machine! Cue the Rocky references. Okay, um, the newest member of Evil's House of Torture. They're really going to try to make a group within a group when Bullet Club barely has enough members to have half a goddamn coherent group going. So anyway, I really hope Sho can get past this Bullet Club bullshit. Um, this uh, o Oiwa, he actually does have some good fire and... That does have a good look. We'll see how he advances in the, in the coming months and year, uh, years rather, before he goes out on excursion. Uh, he <laughs> it was kind of cool how Show did the cadence chops like he did with uh, Yo at Wrestle Grand Slam, and then got a triangle choke for the win. I did like the atmosphere and the you know the sound, the, the golfing sound, everything. It was really really cool. Uh, that is a really cool uh, venue, and the crowd was really goddamn hot, even though... Now, sometimes they went, ooh, with some moves, and even though they're not supposed to make noise like that, they were clapping, stomping their feet, they were making some great noise. So, the first of the A Block, uh, thanks, thank you, thank you very much to a particular friend of mine. I cannot hear, unhear A Block and B Block, the same, I can't, I can't unhear it. I can't unhear it. I mean, it's kind of funny, but anyway... It, we start off with Yujiro Takahashi and Peter with uh, er, taking on Kota Ibushi. Okay, I said this match shouldn't have gone past five minutes, and look, it's nothing against Yujiro Takahashi, who, he's talented, but he's like the Virgil of the fucking Bullet Club. He shouldn't be getting wins. Whether, I mean, and I mean as far as his standing, you know, and how he's viewed. I mean, sure, he can do stuff in the ring, but does anybody really think he's going to be anything special? I don't. Um, Ibushi finally fires up. At one point, though, that was right after, uh, Yujiro had made Ibushi, you know, take the entire pimp juice filled cane that he has right in his hands, gripping it and stroking it across his throat. I'm just going to make these reviews as uncomfortable as possible, as opposed to, you know, my usual happy go lucky, even keeled self. Reverse DDT on the outside. Uh,. Ibushi did hit a stiff kick, but it's just really, really awkward. We get, uh, ref distraction, low blow. Um, and we get pimp juice. Oh no, you know, he just gets it for two, and then I'm like, oh, Kamagoya, nope, high DDT, one, two, three. Yujiro Takahashi pinned Kota Ibushi in the opening uh, of the A block. Great, good, good, no, I didn't really like it. I wasn't offended by it, I just didn't know why. However, Tangaloa Wajado took on the Great Okan, the sack of shit Okan that I hate the Great Okan. I can't fucking stand the guy. In case you are new to my New Japan reviews, I don't know if he's a bad guy. I don't really give a damn if he's a bad guy. As far as a character, he's fucking dog shit. This was given 17 pissing mother 
fucking minutes. They could have cut this goddamn shit in half, or just had five minutes, or maybe not had it all and just, you know, saved the fans the fucking embarrassment and the headaches of having to watch this goddamn match. And I like Tangelo, and I like Tama Tonga. They're great as the girls of Destiny. And Tangelo is a very good worker. I'm done with the Jado bullshit. I'm done with all the Bullet Club shit. Girls of Destiny and Kenta are the only Bullet Club members I even fucking care for. Me, personally. That's my take, and I'm sticking to it. This was fucking ridiculous. Jados Kane, you know, went all over Okan's back, taking forever. Eventually, he hits the, the eliminator, the, the, the hand thing, the bomb, and one, two, three, my fucking God, that took for one of the worst matches I've seen in um, recent G1 history. And I'm talking at least the last few years. Fucking bullshit. Fucking goddamn ridiculous. Ta uh, Tangaloa must have, like, herniated uh, five discs in his back trying to carry this sack of shit Okan. Let's move on to Kenta versus Yano. First, Kenta has uh, the ring announcer say a really long intro, kind of mocking how Yano does the whole merch plug thing, and it takes, like, about 15 years. And Kenta going over all his accolades and just being a heel and everything. This was the usual antics with a lot of tape rolls. So many tape rolls. I think the entire... Uh, Tape store, if they have those in Japan, they have a lot of stores, uh, weird stores in Japan, so they probably have a tape store. The entire tape store, uh, you know, like, you know, like, supply must have been cleared out. I don't really have anything more creative to say, but they were doing, they were trying, trying to do callbacks to, like, when Kenta and Yano faced off in the G1 before. Um, we get a spray in the eye, because, you know, spray ball in the eye, and Kevin Kelly did have one funny line, like Chris's, uh, pregame meal, that is straight alcohol. That was funny. Uh, we get more tape uh, stuff and to the entranceway, but uh, Yano is free to do what he wants, like get back to the ring to win this match. And we get a stiff drop kick in the corner, and I think Yano was staring or feeling like he stor stared at the spotlight. And then we get uh, we get a few more moves. We get a ref bump, and then taped under the ring. Yano's taped and then shoved under the ring, but he gets back up and then manages to get a low blow. The monitor goes up of one, two, three, the with the most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling. Surprise roll up, and Yano gets two points. And then. Things pick up. No, that match was what it was. Yes, Yano's antics at times get tired. Hey, at least he was working with somebody good in the ring. Kenta, unlike that fucking boring-ass match that he had with Chase Owens. And oh boy, Chase Owens is going to be wrestling in B-Block. I guess I know what I'm going to be skipping over, or at least not invested in, because Chase Owens isn't worth fucking investing in. Anyway, what's worth investing in is Tetsuya Naito versus Zack Sabre Jr. Yes, I love this. I love this. Why do people find Zack Sabre Jr. boring? I don't fucking get it at all. This was fucking terrific. Really good shit. The, they know each other so well from wrestling and singles matches and the various tag matches they've had over the summer, which have gone long, but you know you can tell they have a healthy respect for each other. And just really, really good shit. Zack Sabre Jr., I never tire of watching him. He worked on the knee of Naito. Previously injured knee because Naito's had knee issues. Can't imagine why. I'm amazed he hasn't had more neck issues considering him and Ibushi seem to be in a race to see who hates their necks more. But <clears throat> the heel hook and knee focus, really good stuff. The German suplex or two, diamond dust off the top. These guys just fucking tore the house down. Doing really good. They elevated the fucking show way up. This went nearly the distance. It went nearly for speed. And they were all alone, all alone, and no one decided to bleed. Okay, maybe I shoehorned that reference in a little bit. The Spike DDT by Naito was really nice. Um, Destino, but no cover because, you know, he's too injured. Valentia, out of nowhere! The bridge pin, one, two, really close to, like, razor thin. Not as razor thin as Sonata and Ibushi in the final, which, god damn, that was so fucking incredible. That was so fucking good last year. Um... And that stomp to the knee. Holy fucking shit, that was brutal. Uh, tie up by Zack Sabre Jr. and eventually a tap out. Tetsu Unido taps out to Zack Sabre Jr. I hope that Zack Sabre Jr. is in the running at least until like night 12. I, I don't think that he is going to... I don't think he's going to be anywhere near the top by the end of that. But at least have him in contention until, you know, with a few days left in the tournament. Just do something because Zack Sabre Jr. is really good. Is he ever going to be the main guy? No, but he's never boring to watch, at least in my opinion. Uh, is Naito's knee going to hold up for the rest of the tournament because he was carried out and it looks like, or he's helped out and it looks like he was really hurt. Now he's probably just really selling. Hopefully he's all right. So, Tomohiro Ishii versus Shingo Takagi, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion against the Stone Pitbull. The man who really just wants to maul everybody, including himself. And he's a tremendous seller. Ishii may be one of the best sellers in the last 20 years in wrestling. 
Honestly, he's just that fucking good. <laughs> he's that fucking solid. I wouldn't want to fucking mess with I mean, I wouldn't want to mess with anybody anyway. But you wouldn't want to mess with this guy. Apparently really nice guy. But god damn, these two just fucking beat the shit out of each other. So much hard fisting. The second most amount of hard fisting that I've seen from a Japanese match. You don't want to know about the first. Always delete your search history. The heavy chops, the quick strikes, the slam on the outside by Ishii. That was really good shit. Spike DDT by Shingo, the suplexes and the no selling and stuff like that, as you would expect from an Ishii match, especially Sh Shingo does it too. But <clears throat> sliding lariat, that was really good stuff. Um, the superplex by Ishii, there was a superplex by Shingo. This was goddamn, the knockout shot to Shingo and he's just selling and everything. That was really good. So he's just like all out. That was a great reaction. You know the reaction I'm talking about. Heavy strikes, you know, the swollen hand of Ishii because he just kept beating him and doing the throat chops. And he got the throat chops. Oh, it makes me cringe. But, you know, uh, there was a rough ball off the ropes because Ishii was uh, having issues. But eventually does hit a big superplex. That was really nice. So Shingo did one. Ishii did one uh, later in the match. Huge, uh, there was a Made in Japan, huge Made in Japan just for two. Huge Lariat echoed, I felt it in my feet, and I was uh, and I was watching this on delay. It was brutal. And then a Crucifix by Ishii, that was unique. And then uh, Accidental Rev Bomb, Pop-Up DVD. And then we get a huge Lariat, a Pump in Bomber, really heavy. And the Throat Chops, the Headbutts, and sudden Lasso Dragons out of nowhere. One, two, three. Shingo Takagi wins and gets two points. I think they gotta have Shingo win this thing. I'm not, I'm not saying that Bushi doesn't. I'm not saying there aren't people that don't deserve it. But as far as the storyline they're building, with Will Ospreay claiming to be the real world's champion um, over in uh, New Japan Strong in the U.S. brand, and you have Shingo Takagi as the current champion, you have a unification match. You do the right thing, you have Shingo win, which means they'll have Ospreay win. But I think Shingo's gonna run. I don't know if he's gonna run the table entirely. He'll probably lose one match or two. But I think he's gonna end up winning the goddamn thing. If he doesn't, then I don't know the next time they're going to have the perfect opportunity to have the champion run the table like they have twice before. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rethlin. I'll see you soon.